Now in this short video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the present value of an annuity. Before we worked on the present value of a payment, so we're dealing with one particular figure and then discounting that to present day dollars. Uh, in this case, we're going to deal with annuities, which as we know are a series of equal payments that usually span a certain period of time. And obviously that is a little more intricate because we're dealing with money that we're going to receive not necessarily at one time but over a period of time. And as a result, they have to be discounted at different periods of time, of course, which just adds to the complexity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two different ways to do this problem. Uh, first, uh, graphically, uh, just so you kind of see visually how it works. And then I'm going to show you a, a quick equation that you can use to actually solve the problem and work through things a lot faster. Uh, similar to how we calculated the present value uh, or future value of annuities using the graphical form, uh, it is time consuming if you have a number of different periods. So I am going to keep things to just three periods so that we can get through things fairly quickly. But I just want you to see ultimately how this works so you understand how the equation functions here. So first off, we have to assume a couple things. Uh, let's assume that we're going to be receiving a series of uh, three equal payments of $100. And so we are going to be receiving $100 per year for three years. And at the end of those three years, the payments will essentially stop. Now, if you were to uh, simply add up three payments of $100, you would think, well, I'm going to earn $300. But as we now know, because of the time value of money, that $300 is not worth the same in today's dollars because of inflationary risks, opportunity costs, and different things. So just like we did previously when discounting the present value of a one lump sum, we have to do the same thing with the annuity. Uh, so first off, let's go ahead and once again identify what are the variables that we have, and then obviously we know what we have to solve for. So the variables that we have, first of all, or we know we have the payment, which we abbreviate as PMT, and this is our series of equal payments. We're going to state this is $100. Uh, next, we need to know, obviously, the number of periods, which I identified before, is going to be three years. And we also need to know roughly the interest rate that we could earn on this particular type of investment. So let's say for this example, we think we could have earned 7%, which is what we're going to discount these equal payments of $100 as. And of course, we're trying to identify what the, I'm sorry, what the present value of our investment is, not the future value, but the present value, of course. And so how you would work this out first, kind of longhand, is you want to obviously identify and be really organized in what you're working with here. So let's draw just one straight line, and we're going to do a couple of hash marks here for the different periods. And let's go ahead and Add some numbers to these, so that's 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we're receiving $100 the first period, the second period, and the third period. And so what we need to do is we need to take these from the times that we receive them and then discount them back to today, essentially, which is identified as period 0. That would be essentially this particular point in time. And so we start with the uh, closest to the particular time frame we're working with here being the first period and we discount that back to today's dollars here. And so what we have to do is we take that period, that payment, and then we divide that by one plus the interest rate, which is 1.07, of course. And that actually gets us $93.46. And so let's do the same exact thing with period two. So we'll take this, we'll carry it over, and we'll take 100 divided by 1.07. But the difference here is we have to actually use this and we take that to the nth power. And so for the first example, obviously we're in the first period, so n would be 1. So 1.07 to the first power is 1.07. So very, very simple to do. In the second period, it's actually going to be 100 divided by 1.07 to the second power. And so that'll look a little different, obviously. And so if you work that problem out, what you end up is with $87.34. And then we do the same thing. We take the last $100, move this over, and we take $100 and divide it by 1.07 to the third power. We would actually get $81.63. And so if we take 
those three numbers that we had identified before, both 9346, 8734, and 8163, and if we add those together, we actually get $262.43. So if we were to actually receive a series of equal payments for three years in the amount of $100, that would actually be worth, in today's dollars, $262.43, due to obviously not ha uh, the time value of money given that that money is not going to be worth $300 in the present form because we obviously aren't going to have it for some period of time. You know, after year one, we'll have $100. After year two, we'll have $200. And then finally, after three years, we'll have all $300. And so discounted, that would be $262.43. So how do we work this particular problem out uh, simply using an equation as opposed to doing this by hand. If you add, let's say you had 20 periods, this would obviously take a lot of time because you'd have to take the payment and ultimately divide it by one plus the interest rate to the nth power and then do that potentially 20 times. It'd be very, very cumbersome. So, so the equation to solve this type of problem is the present value equals PMT, which stands for payment, of course. I'm going to put a bracket here, and it's going to be multiplied by 1 minus, and then 1 divided by 1 plus your interest rate to the nth power, and you're going to divide everything by, once again, the interest rate again. So a little bit of a lengthy equation, but far better than actually doing everything by hand, especially if you have many, many years, quarters, or periods that you're actually working with here. Uh, and so let's go ahead and, and simply plug in the existing information so we know what we're looking at here. We know the payment, of course, is going to be $100, so we can plug that in. And obviously we have one still, minus one divided by, I'm gonna go ahead and show this as 1.07, since we know our interest rate is 7%, to the third power, and divide that by 0 0.07 once again. Uh, now, 1.07 to the third power is actually 1.225043. Uh, and so if we take that number, and if we divide one, which is this number right here, and we divide it by the result of 1.07 to the third power, what we would actually get is 0.816279. And then, of course, we have to go ahead and take 1 minus that number and then ultimately divide that by our interest rate, and that is still going to get multiplied by our payment of 100 here. And so 1 minus 0.816 2975 is actually 0 0.183720 this is zero right there and then we still have to divide that by 0 0.07 and that equals 2.6243157 and the last thing that we have to do of course is multiply that by 100 and so 100 multiplied by 2.6243157 actually equals, coincidentally, $262.43. And so ultimately, we got to the same, uh, same place that we did previously. Uh, this was much quicker, of course, and it, it obviously gets faster when you have multiple periods because the other method gets obviously much slower. Uh, and so you can use either of these methods, of course. If you only have a couple of periods, maybe you want to work things out simply by hand. But if you have anything more than maybe three or so, it's probably your best bet to utilize the present value of an annuity equation to go ahead and work this out. Now, let me just say, if you had maybe a, a annuity plus a future lump sum, so let's just say at the end of the third year, we would also receive, in addition to our $100 of monthly payments, we would get an extra $1,500. Well, you know now because you know how to calculate the present value of a future investment or a future payment, you know that you would then discount that by three years and then simply add that to your existing uh, cash flows here being $262.43 and that would be essentially your present value. So there are multiple different ways you can do this knowing 
not only the present value of an annuity, but also the present value of a simply a payment or a lump sum, you can combine the two equations or combine the results from the two equations to ultimately find out what you're looking for as well.